Welcome to a new episode of What If with DJ Sock and guests on K Poppin'. We've all done it before, sat there and asked ourselves or someone around us, yo, what if? So a full hour of everyone's perspective on the what if of the day. Our dynamic duo is back. We've got Tia back in the studio with Joe. What's up? Hello. Welcome back. So I was talking to Joel out in the yeah. lobby and he was like, yeah, so how long have you been gone? Like it felt forever. <laughs> it really and I was did. Like, I was gone for two weeks, but it felt like three days for me. Of oh, course, for, I, for yeah. you. And then yeah. I was like, I bet it did. Because <laughs> we're over here in the cold and the, the rain. It and was so, like, it is cold there for, for their weather. I think but cold like, is like 65 degrees. No, yeah. but like, like, I got here and I was like, okay, it should be warming up about now in Korea too. Uh-uh. Like, oh my god, there was a difference, a were big you, difference. Were you here for like the ridiculous rainy weather that was like for a week straight? No. Were you here for that? It was bad, no. I, it was like depressing. Funny thing, <laughs> I left, and the day I left, when mm-hmm. I arrived, I was getting like alerts that it was snowing here. Yeah, it was. I was like, what? Mm-mm, mm-mm. Yeah, I was it so snowed. confused. It snowed a lot. Yeah, everyone Luke over she here, left. oh, yeah, it did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that really? week she left, it snowed oh. a lot. See, that felt like a month ago. I don't know what's going uh, on. Oh, thank God I <laughs> wasn't here. My perception time is all messed up. <laughs> well, the, we, but we are having um, abnormally warmer weather because mm-hmm. they're predicting that our cherry blossom season actually might be almost a week ahead. Ahead be- as in like, as an earlier, in a week? As earlier. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh. I can't wait. I love the spring, even though it's really short. I love it. It's my one of my favorite seasons. My allergies are not going to survive. <laughs> I ha- I don't know what it is. Stream- Spring hasn't started, right? Because remember last time I came here, he I needed took- that medicine because I oh. was having al- I don't I don't have allergies. I don't think. But he was like, Duna, Duna, give me the stuff that T- you gave Tia. I was like, what? <laughs> I, the night- he was like, the, the miracle stuff, the stuff, the allergy pill you gave Tia. The night before, I was laying in bed. I could not sleep because I was so congested. I was like. God, just please let K-pop and come faster so I can get that thing from Isak. Really? I was so, con- I've never been that congested in my life. And I used to have BM too. So I was like, that's, and I got rid of it. Uh. And I was like, how is this possible? Like, well, allergies apparently change as you get older. So like, oh, uh, you can, you, <laughs> you can accumulate a new or a dormant allergy mm-hmm. as you get older. So like mm-hmm. as hormones change and due to whatever atmosphere that you are in, mm-hmm. uh, it can change. So mm-hmm. I used to have really bad asthma apparently mm-hmm. really? Uh, to the point where I don't remember. I just remember having inhalers around the mm-hmm. house. Um, and I know how to use an inhaler mm-hmm. properly, mm-hmm. but now, like I, like I don't have asthma to the point where I need a prescription right, 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 right. inhaler. Mm-hmm. So, like that, I grew out of that in per se. Mm-hmm. Uh, even with you know, like uh, peanut allergies and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. These days, they're actually trying to wean them off of them with a uh, small intake, like controlled mm-hmm. intake, to get your body mm-hmm. to fight off the allergy. Well, you know what's really fascinating is okay. Maybe I sound old, but like back in the day, you know, you know, for uh, you know what that means, right? Back in the day, but um, I feel like people didn't have allergies as much as they do now. So, like, you know what I mean? I agree. Like, I feel like everybody's allergic to something now. And but like when I was younger, I don't remember people really being allergic to things. Like the people with severe peanut allergies and stuff like that's different. But I think part of it is. mm because we're so clean now mm. like there's sanitizer there's what 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 mm-hmm. we have cleaners and back in the day they didn't have that so everyone was just naturally with the earth and that we are naturally right. absorbing everything right 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 the, you know there's a reason why they tell your kids to not be in too overly clean of an yeah. environment right. like you're supposed to uh, uh-huh. build up an immune system to certain things though you know things that are there i feel that there's a very fine line though like I and we're not going to get too deep into this, but like all the vaccinations that I got when I was a kid, you know, Uh like to stop measles and stuff like that. I feel like those are. But those are like life threatening diseases. Right, right, right. That's different. But uh, I mean, I I feel that kids should be rolling around in the dirt. They should have pets at home. I agree. Your your house shouldn't be too sanitized. I mean, if I'm at home, I drop some food on the floor. I'll eat it. But if I'm out, I won't. But in my house, I will. Yeah. Like, and then some people are like, don't eat that. Don't eat that. And I'm like. Well, why? It's my house. Right, Maybe right, it's my right. Keep dead skin on the floor, and that's it. You know what I mean? It's part of me, anyway. Yeah, right. It's, it's probably going to be circle of life. my own DNA. Uh, Tia, how was LA? Other than that, um, I had a really great time. I actually visited San Diego as well. I was born in San Diego, so oh. 
I haven't been there maybe maybe 20 years. So it was really nice. Oh. Yeah. San Diego. I don't I've never been I don't think I've ever been there. What what's it like? It's, it's a waterfront, right? It's it's like two Hawaii. Hour, it's 2 oh, hours it? south of uh LA. So if you're in LA area, mm. if you drive south mm-hmm. about Two hours ish, San Diego. It's a great uh, tourist spot. Uh, the Mexican food is better than LA. <laughs> really? Because yeah. it's closer to yeah. Mexico. Ooh. Well, I miss Mexican food now. But it's like it's 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 not Tex Mex, but it's like California. You have to live in the U.S. to know this, but there's California style Mexican food. <laughs> uh-huh. There's Tex Mex, and then there's Mexican food. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, if you're in L.A., you're gonna get Mexican food, but it's L.A. style. Mm. Then, if you're in San Diego, you're gonna get San Diego style. Mm. It's it's a, it's different. It's hard Mexican to explain, food. but it's different. Well, it's an American style. They put ketchup on their tacos. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What part of it? I don't know. It's like <laughs> fusion. Take it and make it our own, you know, that kind of thing. You're not as tanned as I yeah, expected. Yeah, I was going to say that. Really? I saw Dobby. He's, he's really tanned. I'm, I'm pretty... I got tanned. So... I mean, I can it, see it in your forehead slightly, but you're not as tan as... It, it's tan for me. Well, you know us, us white people, we don't really tan. We kind of like burn. Well, yeah. No, I don't burn. <laughs> Luckily, no, really? I don't burn. Yeah. I burn like a lobster. It's ridiculous. When I'm in LA, uh-huh. I get my LA tan back pretty quick. I've seen pictures of you from a long time ago. I thought you were like Latina or uh, something. Mm-hmm. You were so tan. Oh, woo. It takes a while for me. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Really? Okay. Mm. So, uh, for those of you just tuning in, you're listening to What If Today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really? Tia hasn't been here for a few weeks, so we had to do some catching up. So, today, well, I feel we can kind of mm-hmm. just jump into this, which is not too odd mm-hmm. today. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. We're thinking if, what if you could choose not to feel one emotion? Mm-hmm. Like, what emotion would you cut out? Get rid of. Mm. Yeah. This was a hard one, because I like feeling emotion despite being a cold hearted man, <laughs> but, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I like, I like feeling a little emotion. You know what I mean? Like mm. I, I, it was really hard to pick one and I picked one that I think I'm, it, I don't even know if it is. I'm so emotion. curious of what you picked. Okay. Okay. Well, we were pretty good. I, I actually like when I saw the script, I was like, I was like, Ooh, it's going to be interesting. Not that, not that we ever do anything uninteresting, but I'm just saying like, I can relate to this. There's you know going to I mean? be, a, I think a very interesting twist on mm. today's topic. We get all in our feelings. Yeah. You know? <laughs> So who's going to go first? Oh, 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 oh. You want to go first? <laughs> no, I'm waiting for you. Okay, well, <clears throat> I am uh, very, I'm not that emotional, actually. I mean, okay. clearly, if you guys know me and you hear my voice and stuff, I'm a very loud, mm-hmm. happy, you know, pagan sort of mm-hmm. person. Um, and I don't really, like, express a lot of sadness when I'm sad. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Unless it's, like, you know, re- like, like a death or something like that. That's different. Um, but... There's one thing that I wish I could get rid of, and I wish it was my, my not I don't want to say obsession, but like my need to reminisce, or like the old days. You know what I mean? Like, is that really, a, an emotion? Really, you oh. you tend to be very nostalgic. Yeah, I'm. You know, stop, that's the word. Okay. I'm losing my English. Uh, nostalgic. Okay. Like, I have a really serious problem with nostalgia. So you just kind of find yourself like stuck in. Like this nostalgic state, like yeah, you're like, just oh that that like back then this was good, this is this, this mm-hmm. is that. Okay. Like I'll- sometimes I find it hard to find myself in the moment because I'm comparing it to the past. Oh, you know what I mean? I told you it was gonna be deep. I wasn't even kidding. It's- is that a, it's not really? Re- uh, I no. feel like it's not an emotion, but mm-hmm. what I'm curious here is the emotion you feel when you're in this state. Sadness. Of, so I get uh, well, sadness, okay. sadness okay. or longing. Longing, is that longing? yearning, longing, okay. yearning. You know what I mean? Okay. Mm. Huh. Like there's like certain key things that uh, you know. And I, I'm making myself sound really old, but like no, I mean <laughs> there are people that tend to feel more. Like they romanticize more things of the past. I feel mm-hmm. that more emotional people do kind of bring up that as well. Uh, they're more in touch with their emotions instead of like more logically. Like mm. I need to be just in the moment, mm. like, you know, uh, survival mode. Like it's it's not that you're more of like you, you're able to take your time. Mm-hmm. You like to, you know, dwell and stuff. So, OK, like, so like longing and stuff. Yeah. Like, for example, like when I this is a big one for me. When I hear this song, Bye 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 by NSYNC. Mm. It takes me back to when I first heard I remember when I first heard it and like right. what it was like, like life was like back then. So, you know, we were, you know, kids and it was 
carefree and then that makes me sad because now I got bills so like you know what I mean <laughs> okay, it's so it's, it's like this rabbit hole for you yeah. so it, instead wow. of it being just like you jump up and do the dance and choreography to it better than you do your choreography it's yeah. more like oh god you remember that one time you remember was, that one time oh, okay so you get blading. really like yeah. sentimental about mm. the situation hmm. how about you Tia um I had to think about like what emotion I would pick I would have to say I'd pick two okay, okay. so like I can't choose between the both either of them but um it would be fear and hatred mm. that's a good one i should have done fear <laughs> i am fear, scared of everything go on i'm i'm going with anxiety so uh, I'm, I'm kind of up there with her too anxiety yeah. Okay. yeah that's kind of like in the same vein as fear right right yeah. right so like mm. similar to tia right mm -hmm. yeah like for me i i don't believe so for my life like how to live a good life in my opinion is is love the mm. answer is love mm -hmm. and like having a heart full of love treating people well and for me the opposite of love what would you say is the opposite would be fear and hatred right right and so that's that's why i would pick those because a lot of hate comes from fear right you know you're you're really are an evolved person <laughs> because you're like you know the answer to everything is love i don't think so i think sometimes it's okay to hate because i hate some things and people so uh, but see the thing is <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. Oh, it's true. No, it's true. It's true. You're honest. Yeah. Yeah. You're bigger yeah. than me. Yeah. It's true. No, no, no. It's true. It's I'm true. real petty. I don't know. No, it's true. Uh, but for me, I'm kind of in there with uh, the anxiety part right. because. Mm. For fear and anxiety, like, you know, it's okay, I feel, to fear certain things, but like Tia's going with it, like, there's a lot more hate that branches off of fear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the unknown is what causes people to to latch out and that can feel mm -hmm. or right. be interpreted as hate i could build off of it oh, now that you mention it, i feel like everything kind of is under the umbrella of fear right 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 so like anxiety to right. depression as well yeah mm -hmm. like there's there's an ounce of fear within all of those oh, of course yeah scared to push yourself uh, get out of your comfort mm. zones um fear of confronting the past or whatever mm -hmm. is eating away with you uh what is causing the depression a lot of people don't know but that that mm -hmm. also has has a fear behind that as well not addressing the problem right well, do you find that fear and hate are, can also be separated yeah, because i course. fear bees but i don't hate bees <laughs> because you know they pollinate oh, no, yeah, our of world. course they can be different <laughs> yeah they can definitely be different but i feel that from a, a more mannerism perspective mm -hmm. i feel that uh a lot more hate branches out from mm. fear i think like psychologically if yeah. you dig in deep there's gonna be something related between it right. i feel mm. I feel yes. that a lot of people who say they hate something comes from a fear of it. Mm. Whether they so like I hate men, probably because they got their heart broken. Mm. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. I, I I hate school because they probably got kicked out or like an mm. authority figure didn't make them feel safe. Right. I hate my parents because you got in trouble. Mm -hmm. You know, what I mean? mm, so there's we, something. Yeah. There's something that comes with the territory. I feel even though they can be separated, like just because you have a natural bodily scientific reaction <laughs> to uh like heights or or mm. you know a phobia of something naturally like mm. i feel that that's a little bit different well i could say one thing i want my social anxiety to leave that's why i said anxiety <laughs> well no you know, but, yeah, i hate no i hate too. i hate talking to telemarketers <laughs> Really? I pretend like I can't hear them. You see, it's it's hilarious whenever, because whenever you, a center comes up, I'm just like, oh, oh, what's in center? Oh no! And then I pick up the phone. I'm like, yeah, oh my god! Wait, I think I told this story like because this is also about telemarketer, right? And I told you guys how I deal with telemarketers. I pretend like I can't hear, right? So <laughs> like, like, I'm, nah. I'm like, yo, what's yo, what's Like I do that. <laughs> I finally, some, this is totally off topic, but this telemarketer called me, and I did that. I did that, <laughs> and she was like, 안 들리시면 안 들리시면 그냥 끊으시면 돼요. Like she knew that I was lying. Oh, I was so embarrassed. I was so awkward. No, because she said that, and I was like, I was like, ne? That means that I knew that she, like, she, I could hear her, and I was like, oh man, I feel so bad. That's hilarious. No, but for most of them, it's just I get so much anxiety when I talk to anybody in customer service. I feel like I do that with even people in the states, though. Like even if it's English, I don't think I used to oh. spin it off as a language barrier, mm -hmm. but I'm the I I found that my personality is very submissive mm -hmm. when it comes to something that i don't know so right. like if fear um, of the unknown yeah so it, it no so if like let's say somebody is calling from like I, there's a package or something that i don't know about i'm not the expert in that field and they're just like so did you do this did you do that if they're like blah, blah, blah. i'm like what huh huh like i can't process 
in the moment mm. and then i just say stuff and then i hang up and i'm just like wait what it takes me a while to process what's going on mm. so if people are barking orders at me i freeze uh. and if that's done in a foreign language it's worse mm-hmm. so if i get not just telemarketers like trying to t- sell me stuff but if like somebody like if let's say the uh a delivery service lost my package mm-hmm. and i had already submitted a complaint about mm-hmm. it and they call me about it like i have to take it slow but i don't have the nerve to tell them to tell me slower oh. Oh. so like i can't tell them mm-hmm. which is fine mm-hmm. but like it makes me feel like oh. i'm not on their level if right, i right. say that and i'm already you right, know like right. bending to their need and so i just kind of be like what ne mm. ne ne <laughs> Well, you know what? I'm <laughs> just like all over the, and then they hang up, and they're like, "I should get to." I was like, "Sure," and then they hang up, and then it never gets resolved. What well, is? You know what? I'm just like that. So like, this is so, you and I are so like. So they don't call me. They'll be explaining stuff. I have no idea what they're saying. And then I'm like, "Ah, oh, they. I get some that Then come tell me that, and I hang up. And I just I call back like 20 minutes. I hope it's someone else, like a different worker. So like he doesn't have to explain it to me again. Oh, yes. So I have to hear at least twice. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I me too. I have to. Have, I can't. If people are barking orders or they're asking me something, I have to take my time to process it, but I never... So anxiety for me. Right, right. Anxiety for me. I would love to erase this so that I can be bolder Mm -hmm. and talk to people, Mm -hmm. which is odd because I do... I talk for a living. That's what I was going to say. A professional talker. (laughs) You get paid to talk. That's so interesting. Mm. I'm with you, though. Mm -hmm. I mean... I feel that I'm comfortable here. Like if I was, Mm. if I was paid to do a gig, like if I was hosting a gig or something like that, I can mingle. Right. It's my job Mm. and I want to get more gigs. So I'm going to have my business card ready and I'm going to have my, you know, like it's, it's an occupational hazard Mm -hmm. to be extroverted in that situation. At colleges, like any of the colleges I went to, I never talked to anybody in my class first. Really? The only time I started making friends when I was going to community college back in the States after I came, I like finished my album Mm -hmm. promotions and went back was a couple of Korean kids that were in my Japanese class that I was taking because I had to take a language class and the only class that was open was Japanese. Mm -hmm. And there was a couple of Korean kids in there probably for the same reason. Uh Uh, But one of the girls approached me because I was listening to Korean music. Like my belt, my ringtone was like Pua or something Uh like that. Uh And so she's like, do you know K-pop? Girl. Because <laughs> I already had my tan back uh, from being in the States for a while. Mm. So I did not look Korean. Uh, and so she's like, you're listening to K-pop? Tia turns around, she's like, all right, that's Tia. He's like, turns around, she's like, see. <laughs> 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 and so I asked like, there. And they're like, oh, you speak Korean. <laughs> so back then that was like a really big thing. Oh. So that, that was the first, that was the only way I could get um, wow. friends. Wow. Dang. I, I, I can't imagine that. Well, no, you know what? I can actually. Yeah. Both with both of you guys, I think actually. Mm. Oh, Tia, I feel she'd be very open minded. She'd be like, "Hi," so she <laughs> next time like, "Hi." But I feel, I feel like, it, I feel like whenever I was with you and we were at that kind of jadi, right? Mm-hmm. Like people would always approach you first. I never really seen you go and be like approach people first. So it's both ways. I'm not gonna lie, people do approach me first a lot mm-hmm. of the time. And I will very much do back and forth very easily. But mm-hmm. if if I'm in the mood, and especially not in Korea, I'm gonna be honest. In the states, I will go out first and talk. But that's normal in the states. You 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 walk by a stranger like, how you doing? You know, people yeah, do that there. Yeah, yeah. in the you states, know? like I, me in the states, and me in Korea is very different. Me in the states, I talk small talk with everybody in the elevator. In yeah. Korea, I don't even look at people. <laughs> it's just the difference yeah. in culture. My dad, when he come, my dad comes to Korea, he like starts up random conversations with Korean people. I'm like, my mom does like that. Yeah, yeah. Stop. stop. <laughs> it's so weird. <laughs> Your dad's Caucasian. My mom's Korean. Yeah, I'm like, really. mom, stop. I mean, my mom does that with like cab drivers. Yeah. Like, that, 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 the whole time, it's a 30 minute cab drive and all we're talking about politics and everything under the you're sun you're not supposed to be talking about we're gonna do our skit for today see what our skit is choosing not to feel or if they're feeling at all yes <laughs> oh, this is gonna be fun this is mm-hmm. gonna be interesting mm-hmm. alright we're supposed to be all friends oh I'm a guy this time alright <laughs> oh no oh no okay are you guys ready yes, yes. alright music cue Onni, what happened? Who upset you? You look like you're going to kill someone. Ah, it shows. Oh, you can tell how upset I'm at? Uh, I, I think the moon could see your face and tell you're upset. So, so what happened? Wow, that bad, huh? Ha <laughs> ha, I mean, 
I admit, I'm an open bug with my emotions and everything, but... <laughs> Wait, is it that obvious? Well, I mean, maybe it's just because I know you so well, but... But no, seriously, who upset you? Is it Joel? Me? What? Why has my name come up? I'm working here. Could you please keep it down, Tia? <laughs> <sighs> See, this is what I'm talking about, Tia. I mean, I asked him to do something for me an hour ago, and he's sitting here, quote unquote, working! You're kidding me, one hour? And why are you even waiting for him? Like, just... Huh? Huh? What? Oh, I'm live chatting with my followers. I'll get to that thing you asked for, like, right now. Oh, come on, I dropped an album. I... This is shady. I need to get the <laughs> word out. <laughs> I mean, do whatever you need to, superstar. I'm the one who's going to suffer if I get upset anyway, so whatever. That's true. Don't, don't let him get to you. I swear he lacks some crucial emotions for any relationship. Right? I'm not the only one who feels this. He's so detached sometimes. Yeah, I felt that too. He's just so busy with his album. But, you know, <laughs> I'm detached too. Wait, 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 wait. Tia, if you say it that way, then it makes it sound like I'm the one that is the weird no, one no, no, out. No, 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 Onni, that's not what I meant. Don't get upset, just breathe. breathe. You guys both realize I'm right in front of you, right? Okay, all done. What did you need again? What's happening? Why is Isak upset? What's happened? Adirang. 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 Arirang Radio. Okay, so we were talking about our emotions for today, which ones we would like to get rid of. Mm -hmm. uh, Joel is getting gets really sentimental, gets very nostalgic. Uh, Tia wants to get rid of hate and fear. I want to get rid of anxiety. Who wants to go first? Uh, I, I'll go first. Okay. What, what, what is yours related to? Mine's actually the liter same thing. So like, it's just a um, pull on what people want to get rid of. Okay, you should do it. You should do yours first then because mine's a little offshoot from that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 So the pool has a lot of different emotions on here, but the one that comes first is actually anxiety. Oh! Mm. Yeah, it's anxiety, 32%. And mm. the second one is feeling inferior. Mm. So like okay. that's 19%. I think that kind of goes hand in hand with anxiety. I think so. Yeah. yeah. They're all, it's all a big umbrella. Yeah. What's uh. that movie with the emotions? You would know. They're all like inside someone's head. They're all different oh, colors. Oh, I like that movie. Which movie is that? I forgot. Inside Out? Inside Out, oh, yeah. Inside Out? Okay, anyway. Number two's coming out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Plug. <laughs> but um, the third one is, I don't know if this is an emotion, but it's lethargy. Lethar le lethargy? Yeah. Lethargy? I don't know. How like like it. just feeling boogie deal. Like Down not having and, like, slow. energy to mm. do anything. Ah. That's 13%. Mm. And surprisingly low is depression. It's 12%. Mm -hmm. mm. Then comes annoyance, which is 7 but I feel that depression, though, the funny thing about depression is a lot of people don't know they have depression. Ah, uh, that's true. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Because a lot of people and I feel that it kind of ties in with being lethargic because a lot of people don't know if it's lethargic or yeah. if it's depression. Mm. Like they don't know if it's a spell or if you're just lazy. Yeah. And I think they, they just think that, oh, why am I so like lazy? And right, tired right, 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 right. They don't Which know. Which could be also a health issue. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I feel that those two kind of tie two and two together. But yeah, depression, a lot of people don't know that they're depressed. Right, yeah. right. Because that's, that's all they know. They don't know. Right, like, right. They what, don't know better. Yeah. Right. I mean, you know, I, I know some people that have it. And, you know, it it takes a lot of, I think, listen, I'm not a psychologist. So I'm not going to, you know, but, you know, you have to stay uh, if, if you're aware of it, then it's easier to manage. I think. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I feel and I there definitely is a lot of different levels of it. Mm -hmm. mm. I feel that everybody it's a very. Uh, in Korea, they'll call like a hyundaebyeong, like a very mm. like recent, uh, new generation type kind of mm. new generation. Because if, right now, I feel that a lot of people see this like they feel that they they don't mean anything because of the way society is set up. In well, in another world, I feel that they probably would be. Mm thriving mm -hmm. well you know that's the thing like that's a, it's a big debate these days right like the 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 abundance of dep uh, depression mm. in people and i think our the generations before us our parents our grandparents and before like they probably had it they were just miserable their whole life like they didn't really they just powered through it right you know they, pretty, I mean? they were in survival they world. had no choice right you know so like i think it's it's a very different world now when it comes to stuff like depression wow interesting so mm -hmm. that was an interesting poll and i i'm kind of 
satisfied almost that anxiety came out at number one <laughs> what was number what was number two feeling inferior? feeling inferior that also ties into depression too yeah, yeah. so like I, I feel like it's a lot of like same these umbrella. days oh. yeah because anxiety and depression are the top two problems oh. mentally these days mm. so it makes sense i mean yeah it does i'm looking at number five which is annoyance at seven percent i like being annoyed sometimes Why? you know what i mean especially if it's at a directed at a person because Why? it gives me motivation and it also has me acting scenarios out in my head in the shower too my I'll be gosh. doing that. You know, if I'm really, uh, sometimes I'm like, <laughs> I'm like punch in the air in the shower because I'm like all annoyed at someone. Joel. I'm like, have, I have like this fake fight in my head. I know I sound crazy, oh but gosh. no, you don't. <laughs> I, you you really know what get... you sound like? What? You sound like a scriptwriter. Oh my god. Oh, that's true. Mm. You you don't know how much I like to hear stuff like that. You, know, you sound like a scriptwriter or like a novel, person. oh, or like a novel writer. <laughs> oh, but it makes sense. You're very mm-hmm. you're very nostalgic. You mm-hmm. like to reminisce on things, mm-hmm. and uh, you love to think. You love your quiet time. You also like reading. Yeah. You li- Raining? Reading. Reading. Oh, reading, yeah. And then you play out scenarios in your head. That kind of all leads to the writing mm-hmm. perspective. Oh, Yo, mm-hmm. you found your next job. A, yeah. a screenwriter? A, screen, <laughs> a script writer? Listen. You know, or even a, a book writer. Um, like yeah. novels. I, I have been debating if I should try my hand at writing a novel. I really want to. Go for it. And like, you know, but then I'm like. Oh, but there's so much work. No, this is the sign that you got to do it. And then like, I'm on YouTube and then I forget about it until like a week later. And then I think about it again. And this has been going on for years. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know. Yeah. I'll, 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 if I do write something, I'll give it to you first okay. and see if it's, uh, you know, up to par. Okay. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. You know, I don't know. I'm really, uh, I sound nuts. <laughs> Depending <laughs> on how easily it reads, I probably would be able to read it for you and be, give back. Okay. Mm-hmm. A, as mm-hmm. soon as possible. Yes. Okay, yeah. I'm going to get on that. But yeah, so uh, God 7 was also telling us that, yeah, I mean, I feel that in a lot of generations, everybody has their own survival mode, but I uh-huh. feel that the world has gone through quite a lot of history, like a very long history of our generations being just in survival mode. Mm-hmm. I feel that now we have finally hit a generation where we don't have to be in survival mode so much, mm-hmm. like physically, literally wondering if we're going to have our next meal. So because of that, there, I feel that there is a mental of course yeah mm-hmm. on it like see, we're finding new things about our mm-hmm. own species mm-hmm. see the older generations you know they're like oh kids these days don't you know work hard they don't you know get all these problems are so much weaker than we are and i'm like well it's no one's fault it's just that's how the world is now like it's no one's at to blame for it i was just reading a book and there was a scene in the book of like the student the main heroine against the professor and they were actually having the exact same Mm. conversation it's a very common thing and the heroine who is the college student was just like no your generation i love the argument because i was i was understanding where the professor was coming from in the mm-hmm. whole technology mm-hmm. and everything uh perspective but then the heroine was saying don't tell us that our norm is unnormal when you were the one your generation was the one that provide us yeah, with exactly. this normality mm-hmm. and i was like that's true we grew up without it, so we know mm-hmm. the faults to having it, but the kids that are growing up in the generation, like even 90s kids, yeah. know nothing but social media mm-hmm. and technology, right. so that's their norm. Mm-hmm. We have to learn how to deal with them in their habitat yeah, I and mean, in their norm. And you got to remember also, it's not everybody, it's not, you can't put everybody that's our problem. age together because... People that live in countries that are not as well off as like the States or, you know, these, you know Korea, true. they still hustle. You know right, what I mean? They right. do, do what they got to do to survive, you know? Right. So it's it's just a product of society. It's a product, you know, our parents ran so we could walk, you right. know? Like it's nothing that you can really do about it. Right. You know? We have to experience the hardships ourselves to... Uh, get on that same level mm-hmm. and the hardships that the kids are in it's going different. through these is very different oh, than yeah. what we went through yeah mm-hmm. it's different like the, there's pros and cons to everything i think yeah exactly you know like you know what facebook and instagram were down yesterday that was hard for me really i didn't they know. were down they were they were down all over the world what? for like a couple hours yeah how did this i know, know that, that it was late at night <laughs> it was like 12 12 or 1 at night yeah it was all over the news yeah anyway <laughs> Really, I did not know well, that. Clearly, I'm more connected than you guys. So, I mean, well, you're the one with the check. So, that's true. Oh, yeah, you were you were the one who was talking with your followers mm-hmm. because you just dropped an album. Man, yeah. From Jack out of East Act to Tear, really a little shady on me today. Woo. <laughs> 
you know we love teasing mm-hmm. you. Of course. Okay, we're talking about if we could erase an emotion from our daily lives. Uh, what emotion would that be for our what if for today? And it looks like that a lot of Koreans are on the same page with me when it comes to anxiety. Because mm-hmm. I feel that a lot of different types of anxiety are out mm. these days. Right. So, uh, Joel, what did you bring? So when it comes to anxiety, um, we're going to branch off into worry and being worried okay. about okay. things. And what are people worried about these days? And a survey has the answers for you. All right, so um, we're going to go down the list here, okay? And tell me if you guys are worried about this, just in general. Mm-hmm. Okay. Successful relationships or marriage at 15.6%. Is this a worry for you guys? Hmm. Describe successful. <laughs> As in womb to the tomb, you know, like, you know, until the end of days. I mean, I don't and think... happy, I- happy. Yeah, I don't think it would be like a cocktail mm. about it. But I can see why it's so popular. Yeah. 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 Mm. Like if you're unmarried and like you are planning on settling down, having a happy, a quote unquote happy, right. stable, healthy family life okay. would be. Oh, I understand. Okay. I'm not particularly worried about that. I'm like, if it works, it works. Uh, this one I am worried about, though. Staying healthy at 20.8%. That well, that's one, very high. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, especially in Korea where I feel like they, they put emphasis on health a lot, uh. you know? Um, and as I age, I can definitely feel my mm. thoughts changing on staying healthy. Um, listen, I got my water bottle right here because I'm trying to stay hydrated. All right. Financial stability. Big one, obviously. I think that would be like top. Yeah, well, it is actually really? at 27.7%. Because mm. without the paper, you mm. can't do nothing. So, you know, we definitely put a... In, Importance on financial stability. Employment at 8.9%. I mm-hmm. feel like this goes with financial yeah, stability. Yeah. Kind of mm-hmm. hand in hand. Yeah. It does. Uh, personal relations, 2.5%. That's like, I guess, relations relations you have with your friends, friends or, or just stuff people like in that. general. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not just, being lonely, I think. Yeah. I mean, important, but uh, you could lose me with it. I mean, I, there's more important things, I think. <laughs> uh, I feel like this is very inaccurate, especially for people our age, is reputation and status no no that's this is a korean yeah yeah well i know but it's only one percent so oh, like so it's i lower. feel like it should be way higher oh I, no yeah <laughs> i figured that it would be way higher because like but everything's about you know if it was you choose one option and you can't choose more than one then it goes hand I mean, in hand I guess, with money yeah. right that's mm-hmm. true so money go- comes first because mm-hmm. there's some people that make up whole careers out of just being famous you know what i right. mean like you know and uh it's i feel like it's very important but uh, i feel like it would be higher uh this is another one that i kind of relate to more now or think about more is farewell to loved ones i think that means like uh, saying goodbye like a, sending them off like i think maybe you know mm-hmm, passing yeah. away or something like that and as you get older i kind of think about it a lot more that's at 4.1 percent mm. um unstable situations and old age Mm. Uh, kind of ties in with money as well. Yeah, 14.4%. Wow. But I think that also means like, you know, I mean, th- there are things in place, right? Like, you know, 401ks or social security or stuff like that, that kind of can catch you. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, I think it relates a lot more to like, is my family going to like take care of me? Like when I'm not able to take uh, care of myself? That I sort think of thing. this is a cultural difference too, mm-hmm. because in the States... Our generation, mm-hmm. Tia included, grew up with our grandparents kind of highlighting retirement. Like yeah. retirement mm-hmm. was glorified. Mm-hmm. Like you would see our grandparents like buying mobile homes and cra- traveling across the world, spending time with themselves, you know, getting a chance to go on mm-hmm. trips, go golfing, go, right. you know, go to resorts, stay home with the grandkids, you know, mm-hmm, stuff like mm-hmm. that. Whereas Korea, like a lot of other Asian countries, have always looked to live with their elders mm-hmm. and take care of their elders until they pass. Right. Which is a very different thing in society. It feels a lot more what's the word? More negative in a way. Mm. Like it's not a happy thing you look forward to, but right. it looks the Western mm. style is a little more, oh yeah, I can't wait to Right, retire. right, right, right. It's more of like, yeah, I'm going to retire. I'm going to have more time. Like, you know, I can spend time at home. Me and my significant other, we can go out and have fun. And, you know, my grandma used to go to bingo. Like, I I, mm. I, saw, I saw my grandparents live the life mm. retired. They loved being retired. Mm. Like, we would call them like, oh, we're not home. We're in New York. Or, you know, we're in Europe. And like, you know, they had all this time and money to do stuff. But we're... 
like our like Korea especially it, it is more mm. negative it's like who's gonna take care of me when I'm older right. um, they don't see it as an opportunity to to do something mm-hmm. more right. which I feel could be changing mm. now I feel like but, it has a lot compared to before right but yeah. still like culturally like mm-hmm. there is still like just the stigma right. uh, very different right. I think it also goes hand in hand with money as well because mm. in the states it there's not mu- as much of giving your wealth to your children right, as much right, as it right. is here so right. like the elders don't want to use their money because they want to give it to their children right. so they right. don't have the money to right mm. which it, it makes sense in yeah. that yeah. One, yeah. aspect that's also an, uh, another st- like cultural difference right. in korea it's a d it's it's very complex uh. layered uh, issue I the, the whole hyodo concept mm. which is in a lot of asian countries mm. not just korea right. is is embedded so deeply into right. us that we have to pay our parents back for taking care mm-hmm. of us where the western cultures that is not it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you pop me out but you know you're out of the house probably by 18 and you're right. all just, don't come home <laughs> i've been out of the house since i was 18 so you know i'm, I'm american in that <laughs> boy has been out of the house since she was like 14 or something <laughs> uh yeah the last one would be child education or you know education and like the well-being of your you know, of children, your children you know and that's at 2.4 do you feel that you if you too became a parent since mm-hmm. this was brought up mm-hmm. right. do you guys feel that you would turn into the Gangnam parent no no because i think you should you should fall down scrape your knee and learn to get back up yourself okay. that's the way i was taught but so i'm i'm very much like that as well mm-hmm. i'm i was not an academic kid so i don't want my kids to be academic mm-hmm. likely pushed too much but then i i've also thought this because i was watching the um man i keep forgetting the english title for this uh kang jong was on it recently uh the it has with chan do the oh, drama i haven't seen it i've seen it so chan do is the aunt to the one the younger mm-hmm. lead character and uh her mom left her at the doorstep and then like there's only a really small age gap but she ended up raising her by herself okay. th- mm. that kind of a story but anyways what I was watching and I was like, oh, my God, that actually could be really heartbreaking was uh, that her who's her quote unquote daughter. Um, there's a scene where she's like, oh, no. Ka. So all of her friends are going to have one, but she wasn't. Uh... Mm. And it wasn't because her it was number one. Yeah, her mom couldn't or her aunt couldn't mm-hmm. afford it. But it was just like she really didn't feel like she needed it. Mm-hmm. But then like as she was. She, of course, wanted to do well in school mm-hmm. and she felt limited mm-hmm. by not going. See, mm-hmm. that's the thing. If you push your kids, they're not going to want to do it. Mm-hmm. But if you let them be free and they feel the need for it themselves, they're actually going to put in the work. So you mm-hmm. want to wait until they actually get a yes. chance to feel that urge. But I would also tell them you can choose one way or the other. Oh. It is your choice. Oh. And this is the path you're taking for your life. I'm okay. not going to push you. Well, you know, I think I think as a parent, this is what I would do. I got 15 seconds. Uh <laughs> I would say, like, there's a base level. You got to do at least this. Mm. I'm a, if you're going to be a total degenerate kid, then like a latchkey kid, then I'm going to obviously, like, put you in the right direction. Like, you know, I feel like there's a certain level of, of discipline mm. that needs to be had. Mm-hmm. But after that, you're allowed to choose whatever you want. Mm. That's what I think. Yeah. Okay. All right. I made it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I love how we love to toss around different <laughs> topics for today, and that's the whole part of our what if. Yes, yes. Uh, if you guys have any ideas for what if questions, you can also mm-hmm. send those our way. We can look at your topics mm-hmm. if you would like. We'll see these two troublemakers back in the studio next week, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye. I hope you enjoyed this episode of our What If. Don't forget to catch us on the weekdays from 2 to 3 p.m. Korea Standard Time on a Wednesday. Thank you for listening and don't forget to check in next week.